guys, Chris and Bishop here. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And uh, today's little star of the show, I haven't actually featured them, is our new hatchling children's pythons. And when I say new, they were, if I think, if I correct, I've just got to check my records. End of December, beginning of January, um, these guys hatched. They roughly weighed about 20 grams and they are smashing food. So this little fella has almost doubled in size um since he's been with us and today's actually another feeding for them for the first three months basically it's impossible to overfeed a hatchling you can pump them as much as you can without getting them constipated or anything like that uh, at the moment i'm still on um, feeding every five days um, after three months they'll start elongating to about every seven days and then eventually after about 14 days uh, depending on the species but these guys they are absolutely smashing it. I don't know if you can see, I'm going to try and bring them in focus as close as possible, but this is from our ghost bearing um, and reduced pattern female children's. So every shed, these guys just get better and better and better, and eventually all that patterning will be lost. The eyes will actually go a bit more for orange tint, and um, they'll, they'll actually start developing this incredible sheen. A lot of people think that patternless and ghost are the same. The only thing with ghost, it's got more for sheen than a patternless. Something new to learn. Okay, just gonna put this little guy away. And that brings us to what we're gonna talk about today is shedding. Shedding, the, the clever word for it, the um, scientific word is um, ecdiasis, but we never use that word in the industry. We, we talk about shedding. So we as humans shed every single day. We don't realize because it's not as visual as with snakes, but all mammals, all reptiles, everything sheds at the end of the day. Um, <clears throat> when you take a shower, you dry yourself off, you're actually rubbing off old skin cells and everything. So we, we're constantly shedding all the time. Snakes don't. <clears throat> One of the reasons is the scales aren't flexible. So this can't stretch and grow as the snake crows. So basically what happens is new skin starts to develop under the old skin and the moisture layer starts developing between the two layers. So I'm just going to make a little tear in here and get my hand in here. So if you want to take a comparison, this is by the way from our Bradley female. So basically you can see my hand moving in here and that's basically what, what's happening is you've got the new skin underneath and then there's going to be a moisture layer between the old skin and the new skin. And the first indication of this is your snake will start becoming opaque or what we call in the blue. And when we say in the blue is it will actually darken up. Um, some, some of your pure white, like your piebald snakes and stuff like that, they will actually go pink because that snake is now basically creating a double filter on the color spectrum of the true color of that snake. There's also um, a layer of moisture that forms between the two skins in order for that to separate from each other. And that also indicates on the eye caps. So when we say it's in the blue, it's because of the eye caps, because you've got a, a new eye cap and an old eye cap, you've got a layer of moisture in between those two. So the first question um, that we get a lot, can I handle my snake when it's in the blue or when it's about to shed? I personally would not recommend that for the reason is remember now like I've indicated you've got old skin and new skin on top of each other here handling that snake might move that and you can actually tear into the new skin or into the old skin and actually create a problem shed without even doing something wrong um, so I personally I wouldn't do that the other thing with snakes in the blue especially if it's a bit of a you get those snakes they're normally puppy dogs, but then some days they're just in a bad mood. When they're in the blue, their vision is not that good, and they tend to be in a worse mood than they already were in. So they're normally in a, in a, in a, in a badder mood if they were already in a bad mood, if that makes any sense. During this time that your snake's in the blue, it's probably not going to take meals as well. And one thing that you've got to remember, once it's in blue, you're going to visually see it in the eyes, all that. But if you don't get to the snake that often um, sometimes you don't pick it up because it's night bite box all the time 
and you see, but everything looks 100% normal, but the snake's not eating. Just wait a couple of more days, because what happens was after, after it's now in the blue, that moisture between the two layers, that moisture gets reabsorbed, and that's basically, uh, once you start seeing clear eyes, and the snake basically looks normal on color, then you know it's within two or three days, on average, that it's gonna shed its skin, and basically it's gonna be um, out of the old skin. So, um, shedding indicates quite a, quite a few things, and I'm going to share maybe one or two industry secrets with you guys if you're not sure on what to do. Okay, so the, the main purpose of shedding, it indicates growth, and that normally will happen between 4 to 12 times a year. Um, <clears throat> with smaller snakes, it will be a lot more often, sometimes even once a month, and the older they get, I mean, I've got snakes here that they shed four or five times a year at the most. I think one of my females only shed once this year, but she's getting old. So the older they get, they never ever stop growing. They just grow slower at the end of the day. Growth is the first indication of shedding. The second thing, and this is quite uh, a good indicator, and this is one of the reasons why we're having such successful breeding seasons consecutively on tricky species is if you don't, if you haven't figured out your breeding season yet, or you got your cycles wrong and you don't know what's happening, see every single shed on a female as a possible pre-ovulation shed. The only problem is, if you haven't cooled down the male within the same time period, then you might not have a fertile female at the end of the day. Um, but if you can pick it up and it's nearing a shedding time, you can actually use that time to cool the male down quite a bit and then try and introduce into the female if you haven't figured out the recipe yet. So every single shed treat as a pre-ovulation shed, and that is our indicator for our winter, bre winter breeders and spring breeders that uh, we know when they're made to, to be mated up, and we basically wait for that shed per season. So our winter breeders, breeders, when they start going to the blue in autumn, we know, all right, we need to get pre prepare ourselves, breeding season is upon us, and then the first call front, after that, the first shedding indicates pre-ovulation shed. Um, the female smells pretty fresh of all the hormones, and we introduce the males. The same with our spring breeders. We use sheddings as our indicators for uh, breeding our snakes. And let's say you've got a successful breeding. Here's an interesting fact. A lot of people know this, but not a lot, not everybody knows this. Um, if you suspect that your female does have eggs, and she's not eating, she's belly rolling, she's up and down the hot side, cold side all the time, she's doing what a gravid snake should be doing, but you're not 100% sure. If she does give you a shed, then we call that a pre-lay shed. You're gonna be at, on average, 20 to 30 days. I've had snakes that, that pushed me up to 38 days on a pre-lay uh, pre shed, but a female will normally give a shed before she lays 99% of the time. We've had females that literally, the next thing you open up that um, nest box and there's eggs. No indication of pre-lay shed whatsoever, but that happens extremely, uh, that's extremely rare. Um, I'll say 99% of the time, you will actually get a pre-lay shed um, and that will indicate when you can expect uh, eggs from your females. So once your snake sheds, not a lot of people know that Shedding will actually tell you a lot about the snake. Besides possibly ovulation or a prelay shed, it actually indicates health as well. If you get a snake skin that looks like this Bradley skin here, that's completely one shed all the right through to the tip of the tail, you're doing it right. If if it's in bits and pieces and still pieces stuck on the, sh on the, on the snake, something went wrong. And the first indicator that something went wrong is your conditions isn't 100% for that snake, whether it be temperature or humidity, but humidity is more to blame. What people do, I don't even do it because I just run it normal conditions. And I mean, you can see, uh, I can I can pull out all my Bradley and black headed pythons, all my bigger snake sheddings all one piece sheds like this. Um, worst case scenario, I'll get like a tear. Okay, this one I, I did myself now, but I'll get like a tear on the side. Um, but no stuck sheds on the snakes or eye caps or anything like that. 
So that indicates the right environment. If you've got a problem sheet where the snake didn't shed its skin in one go, then go look at the species, check, double check your environment. So if you've got a high humidity species and it's running at 40, 50%, you know it's way too low and you need to push that up. Uh, what you can even do is provide a, a box with some peat moss in it on the hot side and maybe even one on the cold side if you want. And just to increase the humidity, it's like putting off the sun on um, your skin uh, after a day of sunburn, it just softens up your skin. That's basically what it does. So humidity softens up the skin. It's a great um, assist for sheds coming up. Okay, once you've got a shed, this will actually tell you quite a bit what's happening with the snake. Number one, if you can, try and see if you can get the head, you can see there's both eye caps. If one eye cap is missing, I'm actually going to refer back to the snake and see if there's a stuck eye cap on. Because a stuck eye cap, especially after two or three times, can lead to uh, blindness in the snake and it's going to be taken off. Um, some people use tape. I personally use a tweezer, but you've got to know exactly where to get in and pulled out. Um, I'm not going to address it in this lecture. This is just to... Um, explain shedding and what, what shedding indicates. Okay, so once you've got your shedding, make sure both eye caps are on there. And some species like your um, arboreals, especially with very prehensile tails, GTPs, green tree pythons, um, animal tree boas. Okay, this is now a female. Um, that's actually, I actually didn't check if I've got a male here, but you can see there's the cloaca opening. And then next to the cloaca opening, um, just want to see uh, well obviously there's no hemipenes but males you can actually check the sex and you'll actually see two hemipenes protruding out here it's not always accurate but if you do see hemipenes um, or sperm plaques protruding out of here then you know 100% is a male but if you get multiple sheds and you're not seeing anything then you can know it's probably a female um, so that's one of the indicators we use as GTP breeders is on, on sheds to see what, what sex is, uh, what snake is what sex. I'm getting my words mixed up together. <laughs> Let's try again. Um, okay, so if you do get um, problem sheds, you'll, you'll clearly see it. The snake is shed out, it's two or three days later and there's still skin stuck on the shed. That's actually a very easy fix. Um, you can do a, a few things. One of my personal favorites is I start up the incubator um, at 29 and a half, 30 degrees Celsius, I let it settle down. And I actually take just one of these normal hatchling tubs. Obviously, the, the bigger the snake, the bigger the tub will become. And I actually take this very same moss and I get it properly wet. Um, I put in about 20 moles, 10 moles of water in there. And I actually take the moss right under the tap. So it's basically sponge wet. Chuck it in there and then put the snake in there in the incubator. And I leave them for half a day um, in the incubator and then as often I actually go a lot of time with the moss in there it gives them a substrate to wrap off against and I'll actually open up the tub and it's managed to get rid of that problem shed. Um, in some severe cases we got like those rescues we got in some of them we had to go and manually take off the skin I actually got two Amazon tree bows that came in and I sat there for about a good 10-15 minutes per snake just getting that that problem shed off and guys, when you're getting problem sheets off, just gonna break this piece off here, is the tip of the tail is crucial, especially on your boreal species. People miss the tip of that tail um, and it stays on. A lot of time you'll see, especially your thin elongated snakes or species, that the tip of the tail is like, it's hard. It means that it's been building up problem sheets and at the end of the day, it's going to restrict the, air, the blood flow to that area. And it's actually going to pinch off that tail. It's going to fall off. So always make sure that your snake is completely shed from nose, eye caps, all the way right through to the tip of the tail. And you can check that on the shedding. And you can also check that manually on the snake. If not, get it in the moist box, moist box like I did with the moss. Uh, other thing you can do is you can take water. You can take paper towels, you can take uh, washing towels, anything that's clean and sanitary, put it in there. I'm not a big fan of just putting the snake in water because snakes, 
they've only got two hard valves. They tire out extremely quickly. So for it to be staying buoyant in, in too much water, it's just going to get tired and it actually might drown um, if you leave it in there too long. I'm not a big fan of that. So I normally put something in there that if they do want to be on top of the water or just at least have something that their head or a front of their body will be able to rest on while the rest is still submerged in water. Do not do only water. Give something for the snake to rest on and whatever you give to rest on will actually act as a substrate for it to use that as for rubbing off any problem sheets. So then once you've done that, now you know for your next time, number one, bump up, your, bump up humidity in your enclosure. If you see your snake is in the blue, um, provided a, a shedding box or humid box for it, um, if you don't have one. Um, and then it's, it's pretty easy from there. But like I say, if you've got your conditions spot on, you should not be having um, problem sheds and um, piece of sheds going up and down. Uh, I've, I'm just going through all my points here. So, full sheds, eye caps, um, sex, I've, all our size. That's one thing a lot of people, and I'll take this shed, and they go, wow, <laughs> they measure this. And I'll tell you what, I'm, so from my shoulder to here, yeah, it's a meter, it's one, two, I've got over a three meter Bradley. Physically impossible. Um, she is about 2.4, 2.5 at the most. Um, so snake sheddings is not a good indicator on length. It gives you indication on, on where you're at. Um, and if you can, try and keep your sheddings per species because you do get confused. You get mixed up. Um, I don't even do that anymore. Um, it's always nice to see from where you first got it and you compare the sheddings. It actually gives you almost like a, a nature's chart on your growth rate that you that you've got there um so yeah that's that's, that's a good way um of just seeing the growth right but if you're going to measure the shedding um you can deduct about 10 to 20 percent of this shedding to get your final estimate size on the snake so a three meter deduct 10 10 uh, percent um for this i'll actually deduct 20 percent and that will actually put you in the figure where my estimate is on her. Um, I've actually on my giants stopped stretching them out with the measuring tape on them. If they're shedding in one full piece and I measure them once every two years, it gives me indication they're growing, there's no problems. I don't need to measure them um, because I know they're on weight, I know they're breeding and everything is fine. Okay, so that's basically it. I just want to explain shedding, what it indicates, if you're not doing it right, what you need to do to fix it and it's pretty simple, but it's something that we don't talk about. So I just thought I'll, I'll just share my input on shedding with you guys so that you can understand maybe a bit more of it. Um, you can make this very technical and going into different type of layers and, and everything. I can see the snakes are pretty active. This is our little Angolan uh, looking for food, obviously, because I switched the lights on for, for the show. And I use natural light. So put the lights on and they just see, well, we're either getting food or... That's going to be bothering us in the cage, just trying to swap our water bowls out. Um, they normally vouch for food. All right, guys, that's it. So it's a, it's a sweet, short, just uh, uh, introduction to shedding. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And please like and subscribe our channel and give us a follow and a like. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Cheers.